Okay, so welcome back. And in the last video, we talked about the uh, definition of convergent and divergent sequences. And so now let's talk about divergent sequences because we know we even though we know that uh, a sequence diverges, sequences diverge for different reasons. Sometimes they they diverge because they don't approach a specific value. For example, like this one here. This one here di is divergent because it just alternates back and forth between 1 and negative 1, and it doesn't approach any specific value. Whereas in these two cases, the nth term, as n gets sufficiently large, as n gets larger and larger, um, they don't go, they don't bounce back and forth, uh, and they don't approach a specific value value per se, but they do approach, they, they get arbitrarily large, okay? So in this case, as n uh, approaches infinity, this goes off to positive infinity. So we would say the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n um, equals positive infinity. And similarly, this one here, as n gets large, this is going getting larger negative. So in this case, the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals negative infinity. Now, here's the thing. Just because I write that they equal negative or positive infinity it doesn't mean that they converge. This is just giving more information about the divergence of the series. So again, so this is not saying it's reaching any particular value because it's not. Infinity is not a particular value, okay? So both of these are divergent series because they don't approach any specific value. They're going off to positive or negative infinity, okay? So these are like multiple different ways that you could have a divergent sequence, okay? Um, I think I keep saying series, but I mean sequence when I uh, say that. <clears throat> For right now, anyway. Um, so this is a divergent sequence, this is a divergent sequence, and so is this, okay? But they're divergent for different reasons, okay? So what else do I want to say about that? Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, let's look at this one. Um, oh, another thing about convergent series is this. If I have a convergent series, Let's say I have this series, uh, series, see I keep saying series, sequence. I have a divergent sequence, a sub n, and let's say, so that means the limit as n approaches infinity um, of a sub n equals l, for some real number l, okay? Okay, that's the case then I can add, I can add any sequence to the beginning of this thing. So let's say there's a starting value. There's always an initial term, right? Well, what this means is because um, I can add any value or any terms to the beginning of it, it's still going to be convergent, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it means, so the point I'm making is that the convergence or divergence of a series has, has to do with the nth term. What is going on with the nth term? Is the nth term approaching a particular value or not as n gets large? So I can stick um, all kinds of terms to the beginning of the sequence. And it's not going to change whether the sequence 1 is divergent or convergent. It's not going to change anything. Okay? Um, so it's still going be, to be convergent if it's convergent to begin with. And it will still converge to the same limit, L. Okay, so that's one thing. Okay, 
Now, the other thing to also mention, uh, keep in mind is that we can use functions to help us with convergence and divergence. Okay, for for what what do I mean by that? Well, we talked about earlier. We talked about how sequences can represent functions whose domain is positive integers. Okay, so if I have something like this. <clears throat> Let's say I have something like this, where I have a sub n is equal to 1 over n, okay? And of course, this is defined for all positive integers, right? Now, if I draw a scatter plot of this thing, or a graph, so what happens? It looks something like that. Right, so here's n. And here's 1 over n, or a sub n, right? Okay. Now, we can, we can say, hey, this behaves like a function. So what if I take f of x, equal to 1 over x. The only difference between this and this is that f of x is defined for all real numbers, right? So for the function, we're defining x is in all real numbers, where up here, we're saying n is um, a positive integer. So it's in the natural numbers or the positive integers. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so now, so all we're saying is this is a subset of this. So if this is defined for all r, and this is just a subset of the real numbers, then we can look at the function. We can look at the limit of a function. And if this function has a limit that exists, then that would mean that the sequence has a limit that exists. See what I mean? So we can look at the limit of the functions that behaves the same way as the sequence, and if the limit exists, that means the function is convergent, and so is the sequence, okay? And so we can use that to help us. Okay, now, <clears throat> let's look at this. So now, if we look at f of x for this example, we take the limit, oops, as x approaches infinity of f of x, which equals the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x, so as x gets larger and larger, well, that's going to what? It's going to zero. 
So what did we just show? Well, this shows that f of x is approaching zero as x approaches infinity. So the limit exists, and so the limit of the function is zero. Now, by comparison, so now we know that this, the um, uh, sequence, so that means the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n also equals zero. And that leads us to the next theorem. See you next time.